What is going on guys, Victor here with a brand new video just a couple minutes out from UFC 257 and boy, what a great night of fights. We've had finishes left and right, we've had battles left and right, wars left and right during this whole entire card and it was a success. When I looked at the main card, I didn't think it really looked that well, but it shocked me and it shocked everybody else. We had some shockers on this card, and first of all, I'm going to talk about the main event, Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier 2, the rematch seven years in the making. Obviously, a lot of pressure going in for both men. Both these guys want another crack at Khabib for that lightweight championship of the world that he possesses. Will Khabib come back? We have no idea. The only person Khabib really wants to fight is GSP. Will GSP shrink his body all the way down to 155 pounds? Just if I could be, we don't know, but apparently he's looking really slim and really good right now. But I'm talk I'm here to talk about the main event, Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor, numero dos, number two, round two. And speaking of round two, it only took two rounds for Dustin Poirier to get this win, man. I promised you guys, well, I didn't really promise you guys, but I did predict that Dustin Poirier was going to win the fight via split decision or unanimous decision. Decision either way, but it only took him two rounds to get Conor McGregor out of there by TKO. His boxing was very crisp, and Conor put a lot of pressure on Dustin Poirier during the beginning of the round. A lot of pressure, and he sneaked some good punches in there. He basically let some rocket shots go that did land on Poirier, but Poirier was able to utilize a lot of good head movement. He was also he was also able to utilize a lot of footwork as well to evade a good amount of the shots from Conor McGregor, but Poirier did come out with a very early takedown in the beginning of the fight, which basically shocked everybody because we all thought this was going to be a kickboxing match from beginning to end for how many rounds this was going to the last four. But no, Dustin Poirier comes out of nowhere and basically shocks us all by going in for a takedown in the first couple of seconds of the fight. He ended up getting Conor down there for a little bit. He didn't really work any ground and pound. Conor was able to get up pretty nice and fast. And Conor was able to, like I said, pour on a lot of pressure on Dustin Poirier, get him against the cage, work a couple of shots in. But it was the calf kicks at the end of the day that made a huge difference for some reason. Conor McGregor didn't want to check the calf kicks. Obviously, for my keys to victory for Conor McGregor, I basically wanted him to throw a lot of calf kicks like he did against Nate Diaz during their second fight, but he barely threw any of them. The one thing I was really impressed with by Connor was with the clinch. He did so much good work in the clinch. His knees in the clinch were powerful. His shoulder strikes. Connor throws some of the hardest shoulder strikes in the history of mixed martial arts. He just uses his whole entire body and he literally jumps and then propels himself into the air in order to increase the force of those shoulder strikes. And they were definitely doing some damage on Dawson Poirier. You could see it on his face. But the story of the day wasn't just only the calf kicks, but it was the boxing of Dawson Poirier. Dawson Poirier has some of the best boxing in all the UFC. He's defeated guys such as Max Holloway and, Dust and Justin Gaethje with his boxing, with his combinations. And he worked a lot of his combinations during this fight, and he's able to eat some of Connor's best shots and then come back and give it back to him via combinations, and that's basically what ended the fight. It was just those right hands that were connecting flush against Connor McGregor, and for some reason, again, since Connor McGregor hasn't really been fighting lately, since he's been inactive for a whole entire year now, he only fought once in 2020. I was against Donald Stroney, that only lasted. About 40 seconds, less than a minute itself. Conor McGregor came out pretty bold and said he was going to finish Dustin Poirier in less than a minute in the first round. That did not happen. Conor McGregor was looking past Dustin and he was looking forward to Khabib basically planning his next moves with Dana White in order to get Khabib back. As some of you guys might have saw, Dana White's looking for a fight. Abu Dhabi Part 3. They obviously went with Khabib to a local MMA show in the area. And you could see that Dana White was trying to bait Khabib into coming back for another rematch against Conor McGregor that basically overdo the pay-per-view the pay-per-view buys that they sold last time and they sold a lot of pay-per-views. I mean a lot of pay-per-views it was it was just the numbers were staggering. And to be able to break that record again 
by having another rematch with Khabib would have been absolutely crazy. Obviously, Conor McGregor was focused on Khabib. He was barely focused on Dustin. The whole world thought that Conor McGregor is going to win. So basically, that gave Dustin an even bigger chip on his shoulder. So Dustin Poirier is already mad enough that he lost the first time. He's even madder now that everybody is betting against him. And they've got Conor McGregor on all the odd sheets, all the spreadsheets when it comes to gambling as a very high favorite. So obviously, I was very happy to see Dustin Poirier beat Conor McGregor, but does this mean he's going to face Khabib next? I highly doubt it. I believe that Dustin's most likely going to have to fight one more time if Khabib does decide to stay, or Dustin's going to have to go straight for a title shot if Khabib isn't going to come back to MMA, if he's never going to fight ever again like he said he would, uh, like he said he wouldn't back in his last fight against Justin Gaethje. So if Khabib doesn't come back, then Dustin's definitely going to fight for the title next. Who will it be against? It's either going to be a rematch with Justin Gaethje or a match that I really would like to see is Dustin Poirier versus Charles Oliveira. Obviously, Charles Oliveira beat Tony Ferguson convincingly. That was about, a, I believe it was a 30-26 performance because Tony barely got in the groove during that fight at all. He looked amazing. And Tony, I mean, Dustin never got a chance to fight Tony Ferguson. So obviously, Charles Oliveira coming in there, beating Tony and grabbing that number three ranking in the lightweight division means a lot. Obviously, Charles has said multiple times, his agent has said multiple times that he's not going to fight until he gets a title shot. His next fight is going to be for a title shot. So obviously, will we see Dustin Poirier versus Charles Oliveira for the vacant lightweight Championship of the world if Khabib doesn't decide to come back, mostly Connor. Who is going to who is Connor McGregor going to fight next after this loss? It's got to be against Nate Diaz. That's the biggest money fight that Connor can be able to take. Nate is one of the biggest draws in the UFC's history just because of his popularity and his uh, rough attitude. He's from the streets. He's the only one that's ever. Conor McGregor as mad as he's ever been. He defeated McGregor a couple years back. McGregor got that W back. They're one and one. They got to finish the trilogy somehow. McGregor wants to do it at lightweight. Nate Diaz has hit him many, many times. But he's going to come back to the lightweight division. So Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz has got to happen next. And if Poirier's got to fight one more time to fight Khabib, if Khabib decides to stay, then he's going to have to fight Charles Oliveira in order to get the Khabib. If Khabib doesn't come back, then Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier is going to be for the vacant lightweight championship of the world. Like I said, combinations, the head movement, the leg movement, and then the evasiveness of Dustin Poirier being able to dodge some of those shots and being to take, being able to take Conor McGregor's best shots as well during that fight, along with the calf kicks, which basically immobilized one of Conor's legs. He was basically fighting on one leg because his the one leg that was getting kicked by Dustin Poirier was just extremely swollen right off the back. And I don't understand why he didn't check any of the leg kicks, but we won't know until Connor gives us a good explanation himself. But it was just a great performance by Dustin Poirier. Connor McGregor was in there the whole entire time. I just he couldn't take the shot. And we've gotta be honest, this is Connor's third fight at the lightweight division. He's still green to this division. He's still brand new. He obviously had two rounds the first time the first time he fought at lightweight against Eddie Alvarez. That was about a round and a half. And then four rounds against Khabib Nurmagomedov, where he basically was losing the whole entire fight except for the third round itself, where Khabib decided that he wanted to take a break. And, you know, slugging out with Conor McGregor before going into that fourth round, wrestling again and utilizing some of his jiu-jitsu against Conor, who's not the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, defensor or, yeah, defensor on the ground. I'm going to make him a word. I'm going to say defensor because his Brazilian, his Brazilian to just use BJJ is not used for defense. Actually, it is used for defense, but he uses it terribly whenever someone is using it on the offense. So, obviously, Conor McGregor does have a lot of work to do. If he wants to come back, he's going to have to come back with a theory. It might be in another couple of months since this fight only lasted about two rounds. And Conor McGregor did take a significant amount of damage he wore it on his face. He wore it on his legs. So obviously, we'll have to see what happens. But that's just my thoughts on this main event. 
tomorrow I'm going to make another video on some of the other fights, some of the other performances I was very impressed with, with some of the other fighters on the prelims and also on the main card as well. So I appreciate you guys for watching this video. Continue to keep on watching MMA and being impressed with a lot of these fights because there's a lot more to come in the first quarter of 2021. A lot more title fights, a lot more super fights, and a lot more rising stars that are going to be on the big stage. Later, guys. Enjoy the rest of your nights and stay safe.